So what we're doing here is we're creating an airflow system that burns the volatile gases off of the organic matter, mixes those volatile organics with an airflow that comes in the top here, and burns them and starves the fuel itself of oxygen and creates a pile of char in the bottom of this container. So one of the drawbacks to these kind of setups is that you get it going, and I'm going to get it going kind of while I'm talking here. So to get it going, we want maximum airflow. So, so everybody can see there's a bunch of holes in the bottom of this can. So that's for our updraft. So to get maximum updraft, I'm going to tilt the can up on its side like that to get it going. And I'm going to use a couple of little pieces of lighter pine here, and we'll get it going. So in your diagram, the 55 gallon drum that's drawn on the diagram has inside of it what's called a retort, which is a container within a container. So inside of this 55 gallon drum right here, I have a half of a hot water heater that is sealed on one end and open on the other. The open end is stuffed full of a material that I want to char. In this case, I believe it's palm fronds. And the open end is then set inside the drum with the open end on the bottom of the drum. Mm. So there's only a little space at the base of that inner container that will allow the volatile compounds to leak out of that inner container. They mix with the air that is coming in the bottom, they rise to the top, are combined with oxygen, and reburn. So that's not actually happening in this process because what we have in this process is nothing but fuel wood inside. So once this is burned down to nothing but a pile of red hot cherries in the bottom of it, you've got to snuff it out. So you can pour water on it. Ideally, you put it into an airtight container and close the lid on the container and you snuff it out without wetting it. Because if you wet it, you've got to dry it to re-inoculate it with your biologics. So to keep it dry, and supposedly someone told me that it changes the molecular structure to, to pour cold water on hot char. Um, I'm not exactly sure about that yet. but. Um, that's the story. So once that's going a little bit, I'm going to put my uh, my lid on, and we'll create our chimney effect. So that's it'll awesome. smoke for a minute. Once all of the stuff in the top gets going really good and the oxygen starts mixing, you'll see the smoke will disappear completely. At that point, we'll let it burn for another couple of minutes to make sure that we've got a nice even bed of coals and heat across the top. At that point, we can drop this down and let it sit flat on its bottom. And what will happen in that, at that point was that we will restrict the airflow that is pushing our volatiles up into the fire so that the concentrated airflow will be going in and mixing with those volatiles that are being kind of tickled up by the restricted airflow from the bottom. So you can see now, 100% clean burn, nice and hot, good and sweaty. So it's cleaner than a propane flame. Wow. Well, and you're outside too. So. Well, and you're outside too, but theoretically, you could do it in a tent in a, with a smaller flame than this, of course. <laughs> on one of these guys, you could do it in a tent, and you're not worried about carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah. So, as you can see, I restricted the airflow. There's no airflow coming up through the bottom, or very limited airflow coming up through the bottom of this. All of this burning is going on with the air that's going in these holes <laughs> and combining with the gases that are coming off of the wood and reburning. So this will burn just like this for about 45 minutes. You can cook anything in that period of time, absolutely anything. You can increase these, you can stack these cans on top of each other and make it taller to hold more fuel. The cleanest stuff to char, so leaves, sawdust, hay, straw, palm fronds, all that stuff is really thin already, so it's already halfway to three quarters of the way broken down, especially leaves, you just grab them and squeeze them and it's powder instantly. So just in the process of taking them out of a container and putting them into a compost bin and then taking them, it's broken down with no labor. So what do you have in there? In here is just uh, sticks and palm fronds. Okay. In here I have, um, the bamboo is the main fuel source and inside the canister is just palm frond leaves, no stems.